It's the holiday season, 2020. A time for giving, a time to play in the snow, a time to wear a mask and gloves when you go out to protect yourself and others from the coronavirus, a time to go on Facebook and get into political arguments with your extended family that you barely talked. Okay, let's be real here. December 2020 doesn't exactly feel like the most festive time of our lives. But as I've said on this channel many times, music is the one thing you can always turn to when you've got the blues. Since a lot of people are going to be spending the holiday season at home, I'm sure everyone can appreciate some good Christmas music recommendations. I'm also a firm believer that really solid holiday music can be enjoyed no matter what you celebrate, whether it's Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or even Festivus. A Festivus for the rest of us! So this year, with a little help from my History of Rock crew, I'd like to review something Christmas related. Oh, are you going to talk about the new Mariah Carey holiday special? No, no, no. I want to talk about a Christmas album that's near and dear to my heart. Oh, are you going to talk about that Weird Al Yankovic Christmas song about Santa being a homicidal murderer? Wait, what? Oh yeah, it's called The Night Santa Went Crazy. The Night Santa Went Crazy. Hmm, tempting. But I actually want to talk about an album that I've heard practically every Christmas for as long as I can remember. 1968's Soul Christmas. Ooh. Every year my parents would bust out this record from their collection and play it while we decorated the tree and watched the Garfield Christmas special. Nice touch. It's a compilation album of the classic Stax artists performing soulful renditions of holiday classics and a few original tunes. Remind me, what's Stax again? Stax Records was essentially Motown's direct competitor in the 60s. Though they usually operated under the Atlantic label, Stax had been producing songs with legendary artists such as Otis Redding, Sam and Dave, Carla Thomas, and of course Booker T and the MGs, who also acted as house band for Otis and many of these artists. Sadly, Otis had died the year before, and Stax was breaking away from Atlantic over business dealings. A lot of these artists had been recording Christmas songs as far back as 1963, so in November of 1968, Soul Christmas was released and enjoyed quite a lot of success. You know, I've never actually heard of this before. Color me intrigued. I've definitely heard a lot of these songs done in one form or another, but I'll listen along. Alright, well let's give it a spin on the old turntable. First up is an original song by Clarence Carter singing Backdoor Santa with his rockin' voice to give it that signature stack sound. They call me Backdoor Santa. I make my runs about the break of day. Clarence Carter, born blind, had only just started finding success with Atlantic, including his hit Slip Away. His success continued as he released Backdoor Santa as a single the same year this album came out, which is probably why it's the leadoff song. Now I'm sure a lot of you out there have your own interpretation as to what Backdoor Man actually means. Don't say it. But in blues lore, it's usually about a man having an affair with a married woman and then running out the back door of the house before the husband comes home. In Clarence Carter's case, he's a backdoor Santa. Yeah, because you know, when I think Christmas, I think adultery. In all seriousness though, it's a funky song. Those horns just give it that classic R&B feel, and I can imagine sitting down, relaxing, listening to this while I drink my eggnog. It's actually a tune I've covered myself at gigs around the holidays. You know, back when I actually played gigs and went outside. Anyway, Soul Christmas is off to a smoking start. Now let's move on to something a bit more mellow. <laughs> King Curtis, who I am not related to, at least I think I'm not, was a session saxophonist on many classic 50s and 60s records. That's him playing the famous sax solo in Aretha's Respect. He also led the band The Kingpins, which were just starting to get some traction, including this 1968 cover with a very young Dwayne Allman of the Allman Brothers playing guitar. And we all know how much of a Dwayne Allman fanboy you are. Hey, you just remember, Dwayne Allman died for your sins. I do really feel a bit of that holiday nostalgia listening to this one. King Curtis interprets the melody in such a hip way, while the orchestration still gives you that warm feeling of sitting around the fireplace by the tree. Yeah, this definitely reminds me of being a kid. 
I can remember every single year my dad would play his entire collection of holiday jazz music filled with tons of saxophone solos. There was definitely a lot of Kenny G. It's a great mellow jazz song. Well, over the past year or so, I've actually gotten more into jazz music, listening to guys like Miles Davis, David Sanborn, Candy Dolfer. And you know I'm always a sucker for a good saxophone. Saxophone. Can't you two go one video without playing a Simpsons clip? <laughs> TV respects me. It laughs with me, not at me. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> no! But now we come to the main event. Otis Redding singing White Christmas. I am dreaming. Well, this is obviously a Christmas standard, with maybe the Drifters version being the most famous, as it was included in Home Alone. Even though Otis was gone at this point, the label continued to release tracks of him posthumously. Dock of the Bay had been released earlier that year. His rendition of White Christmas was also pressed as a single. On paper, Otis singing White Christmas may seem a little strange, but as many have said, Otis could sing the phone book and make it the most heart-wrenching ballad you've ever heard in your life, and this track is no different. With Booker T and the MGs backing him up and the Memphis Horns playing, Otis Renning singing White Christmas may very well be the best Christmas track ever. Otis is the best. I mean, any song of his is going to be way up there on any list of mine. Here's one that was curiously left off the album when it was uploaded to Spotify. Joe Tech singing an original called Make Every Day Christmas for My Woman. I have to be honest, up to this review, I knew next to nothing about Joe Tex outside the song. Researching him for this video, I'd say he's definitely worth checking out. The previous year, he had a big hit with skinny legs and all. And later in 67 released this original tender Christmas ballad. Following up Otis Redding with a choir is definitely an oddity. I've got a soft spot for the song, but it might be because I've been listening to it since I was a kid. Yeah, I can kind of see why they took it off the album. I mean, Skinny Legs has this cool James Brown feel to it, so to go from that to this kind of schmaltzy number is actually a letdown. Next up, we got Booker T and the MGs, best known for the track Green Onions, doing a cool version of Silver Bells. In fact, the band released an entire instrumental Christmas album in 1966 called In the Christmas Spirit. Booker T's organ kind of gives it like a tropical vibe, right? I like it. The perfect song for Christmas in July. Or the airport. By the way, I've met guitarist Steve Cropper before, really awesome dude with great stories. And on this track, it's interesting to hear him play a 12-string, very atypical for him. Now we come to Gee Wiz It's Christmas by Carla Thomas, daughter of soul legend Rufus Thomas. Carla was one of Stax's earliest stars. Her ballad Gee Wiz, Look at His Eyes, was released back in 1961. This 1963 Christmas single recycled the title of her hit. One. It's got kind of like a Marvelettes feel to it, right? Please Mr. Postman? Or even one of those Ronettes Christmas tunes they were producing at the time. Yeah, just be thankful Carla Thomas didn't have Phil Spector's crazy ass barking orders at her. Well, that's side one. Now let's listen to side two. Just give me a second, I gotta flip the record over. You do know that we have Spotify, right? Like you can just pick up your phone and play the whole album? No, we are going to be authentic and listen to this album on vinyl. Why? Because. Yeah, we should really be listening to this on the 8-track. Moving on, we got another Otis tune, this time his rendition of the bluesy Merry Christmas Baby. Yeah, Booker T coming in with the organ riff right on the top of the song. I am so into this. Merry Christmas! This was the flip side to Otis's White Christmas single, so I guess they thought they might as well have it start the flip side of the record. It's pretty clear Atlantic was still banking on their most popular star. This is another one I've covered a lot at Christmas gigs. I don't know what else to say, it's just another classic Otis Redding track. The next tune, Presents for Christmas by Solomon Burke, is one of my favorite tracks from this album. Christmas presents around the world. Now here's a fun fact. 
The first song Solomon Burke ever wrote was Christmas Presents from Heaven, and later it became his first single in 1955. He'd obviously continue to write hits like Everybody Needs Somebody to Love, Gotta Get You Off My Mind, and he'd even record an update of his song, this time titled Presents for Christmas. I gotta tell you, Solomon sounds like he's having a lot of fun with this one. My favorite lyric out of this entire song is just, you know, I'm even fat enough to be the world's biggest Santa Claus. And everybody could just, just stand around and just say, ooh, is that for me? Here's another one by Booker T and the MGs, a rendition of Jingle Bells. I mean, you wouldn't think Jingle Bells of all things would be soulful, but they actually managed to really make it their own. I love it. Second to last, we got another original by William Bell called Every Day Will Be Like a Holiday. When my baby comes home. William Bell was another early signing for Stax and was experiencing his biggest success that year with the song I Forgot to Be Your Lover. Bell actually continues to perform to this day. This 1967 single might be his best known song. It's been covered by a lot of artists and for good reason. Catchy melody, great harmonies, a real holiday treat. And last but certainly not least, we got King Curtis blowing on What Are You Doing New Year's Eve? Written by Frank Loeser, Loser, Frank Loser. <laughs> his name is Frank Loser. <laughs> it's Frank Lesser. Guys and Dolls, how to succeed in business without really trying? Maybe it's cold outside? I don't know anything about musical theater. This was the flip side to King Curtis's Christmas song single, and this time Dwayne Allman gets a solo. Oh, here we go. You're just gonna freak out over the Dwayne Allman solo. I'm not gonna freak out. Oh my god, it's Dwayne Allman who's playing the solo! And there it is. Just like clockwork. Sadly, we lost both King Curtis and Dwayne Allman in 1971, but it's great to hear them together on tunes like this. It's like visiting some old friends through some old memories, which in many ways is what the holidays are all about. So that's the original vinyl record. Now, since it came out in 1968, there's obviously been plenty of re-releases, and on a lot of these they have bonus tracks, some which were released after 1968. I actually had the 1991 re-release CD of this with 18 tunes on it. And probably the best edition is a classic from Donny Hathaway, This Christmas. Oh yay, this is my go-to Christmas song. And this Christmas. I absolutely love Donny's This Christmas. It brings me so much joy. It's probably one of my favorites. And this isn't some modern auto-tuned version of it. This is the original 1970 record written and performed by Donny himself and it is quite simply a masterpiece. From the progressive horn arrangements to Donnie's unmistakable vocals, I mean, this goes beyond just being a fun Christmas song. This is a geniusly written R&B track. Yeah, it does sound familiar. Probably heard this at some mall or something. A mall? Are you serious? How is it that you know all of these random ass anime songs, but you don't know this Donnie Hathaway classic? Hey, I'll have you know that Kyoku Tadashi Christmas from Ranma 1 Half OEV Episode 7 is possibly one of the best anime Christmas songs I've ever heard! What? I don't even listen to what he says anymore. Another update is the 1967 track by Luther Vandross called May Christmas Bring You Happiness. I love this. And all those background singers. <laughs> Reminds me of that Patti LaBelle clip. Where are my background singers? Woo! Oh, and check this out. One of the bonus tracks is All I Want For Christmas Is You. Yeah, Mariah, finally making her appearance. Let the kitties have the toy. Oh. Mmm, this isn't my favorite song and definitely not my favorite All I Want For Christmas Is You, as established by my excitement for Mariah. And we got another Booker T in the MG's tune, this time with their rendition of Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And while Bruce Springsteen's version will always hold a special place in my heart, I think this is my favorite of the Booker T songs on this album, even if it's just a bonus track. In fact, it makes me want to check out the entire Christmas Spirit album. One more for the road, with Otis Redding and Carla Thomas singing together on New Year's Resolution. 
The year before, Otis and Carla had released an album of duets, King and Queen, to compete with Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell's hit-making duo act. While New Year's Resolution isn't exactly a Christmas song, it was included near the end of the 1991 release, and I think it's a great track to ring in the new year. Speaking of which, what's your New Year's Resolution gonna be? After my last failed New Year's resolutions? I don't think so. Yeah, I think that about sums up 2020. Let me first just say, this album grooves hard. Whereas a lot of Christmas music tends to come off as corny and overdone, Soul Christmas is just all these Atlantic stars doing their thing. Otis's syncopated singing, King Curtis blowing a heartfelt ballad, Booker T and the MGs just grooving like no other band can. If you're as big a classic R&B fan as I am, you can listen to this album anytime, not just December. I usually do my own little special tribute every Christmas, usually watching holiday specials, but I think I'm gonna start a new tradition by putting on this funky little record whenever I want to sit down with some eggnog myself, or if I need to do some Christmas shopping and need some appropriate music that's not wonderful Christmas time. Overall, I really love this album, and any excuse to listen to Christmas music? Come on, I wait all year long for this. You know, the holidays can be a very emotional time of year. I mean, how many melancholic Christmas stories and movies have you seen in your lifetime? And 2020 has had no shortage of heartache. I didn't even feel like really celebrating this year. I was like, what is there to celebrate? But then I'll think back to my childhood, you know, sitting around with my parents watching It's a Wonderful Life for the nine millionth time, or listening to great records like this. You know, brings me back to a, a simpler time, which I, I think sometimes we need to feel that nostalgia, if anything, just for some peace of mind. Soul Christmas is like a yearly tradition for me. I have to listen to it every year. It's spiritually uplifting, it's fun, it's emotionally moving. The Soul Christmas album? Well, it is Christmas for me. And that's the reason I really wanted to highlight it for you all, to give you something to listen to this year, and maybe bring you some holiday cheer. Happy holidays, everyone, and please stay safe this year. Happy holidays, everyone. Whatever you celebrate, loved getting to share the spirit with you. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, wear gloves and a mask, and once this is all over, celebrate the fuck out of 2021. Lulu.